Hi everyone, I'm back and it's been about nine weeks since I had my babies. I think the last video I posted, um, I think I went into labor that next day, so which I didn't expect. So um, yeah, I, I'm sorry it's taken me so long to post this video, but obviously having twins and three other kids has been pretty hard, <laughs> not gonna lie. And um, I've just been super busy. So I'm finally getting around to posting this, which is my birth story video. And I'm gonna put a link below of my actual birth video where it's the video of us in the hospital and the babies being born and all that fun stuff. So if you wanna watch that, you can go ahead and do that. I'm hoping the babies are happy during this video, but. <laughs> so I'll introduce you to them um, in a little bit, but. Uh, and probably do a video some other time about what it's like having twins and you know the transition and all that stuff. So that's a whole other story. But this video is just gonna be about the actual birth. Uh oh, he's starting to get crabby. <laughs> Real life. <laughs> okay, so um, what happened was is the day before I turned, or the gestation of 36 weeks came, so I was, um, yeah, 35 weeks, I believe, in six days. I had a doctor appointment, and so I went to that doctor appointment just like normal, hoping that baby A, which is this guy, this is Jude, and this is Jethro, so um, Jude Joshua and Jethro Caleb, we call him Jet. So this was baby A, and he was turned breach for a lot of the pregnancy. And so I was going to this doctor appointment just so hopeful that he had turned because I knew that that would depend on whether I was gonna have a C-section or have a, a VBAC. So my doctor was very supportive of VBACs as long as baby A was head down. So I was going just praying like, oh, I just hope he's turned. And I had gone probably five days before to an appointment and he hadn't turned so I wasn't getting my hopes up. Um, so yeah, I, I talked to, I wasn't supposed to have an ultrasound, but I talked to the sonographer when I got there. She said, I can just check for you real quick. So she checked and guess what? He had turned last minute. I was so happy. I started crying. I was just like, yes, cause I really didn't want a C-section this time around. Um, I've had one other C-section before. My first two were not, my third was. And so I, I just didn't want one after that recovery. It was crazy. So. I, um, so anyway, I got the NST. I had to get an NST that day, which is a non-stress test. And I had to sit there for like an hour while they put both of the monitors on both babies. They have to watch their heartbeat for a certain period of time and they have to watch their movements for a certain period of time. And so finally everything was okay with that. And it also tracks contractions. And so I had been having Braxton Hicks or what I thought were Braxton Hicks for about a week and, or two actually. Um, I had practice contractions for months, but then I had like real contractions that just weren't that strong for about two weeks. So I just didn't think they were a big deal. And so I went into the room to see the doctor. You know, I was getting ready to see the doctor and he comes in and just like peeks his head in and he says, okay, so when are you coming back today? And I'm so confused. I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> Said, we're having these babies today and I was shocked it's like what he said you're four centimeters right now and the baby is the right way so that means it is time to have these babies you're gonna go fast and I was just shocked it's like what I did not expect this at 36 weeks you know all my other babies have been late past their due date so I just thought you know I'm gonna go all the way to 40 weeks with these babies no um so yeah I I was really excited so he, he said, it's time to go. Um, I want you to go eat lunch, come back as quickly as you can, pick up your husband, and then come back. So I came home, picked up Will, and we went straight to the hospital after lunch. So we got to the hospital around two o'clock. By the time I got to the hospital and got checked, this was probably three o'clock, I was already six centimeters. So I was already progressing very quickly, but the amazing part about it was that I didn't know I was in labor. I had no pain. And um, I had been praying for that my entire pregnancy, that I wouldn't have pain this time around. And that I would, I specifically was praying that I would show up to the hospital 
dilated and not know it. So six centimeters, that's this much. So if you put all those fingers together, um, well, I guess, how do you do it? That. So babies were coming and I didn't even know it. And so I guess just the baby getting in the right direction really started labor. So they got me all set and everything. They had the monitors on the babies. I still was in no pain. We were actually, while we were waiting for the doctor to come, we turned on Avengers and we're watching Avengers and we were looking at each other like, is this really the birth right now? Like, I just couldn't believe it because so many of my births have been, or a couple of my births have been more traumatic. And so I was just shocked. Like, oh my gosh, I'm not in pain. I didn't even have an epidural. I wasn't in pain. Everything was going great. So I just still didn't believe it. I was like, something's gonna go wrong. I don't know. I was just praying like, Lord, just keep these babies safe. Keep me safe so I don't have to have surgery. And every time they checked me, I was a little farther along. And the doctor came in, he checked me. By that point, I was seven centimeters. He said, okay, I'll come back in about an hour and check you again, eight centimeters. He said, okay, I'll come back in 30 minutes, check you again, nine centimeters. So they gave me the epidural and because I actually didn't even really want an epidural because my birth was going so well. Um, but he said, I highly, highly, highly recommend an epidural when you have twins and when it's a VBAC. He said, the likelihood of me needing to go in elbow deep to pull out baby B is very high and so that doesn't feel good. <laughs> he said, sometimes I need to internally, internally turn that baby. And so I just recommend you do it. Also, you never know if baby B has to be born C-section when baby A comes out naturally. So um, he just said, I don't want you to be knocked out and not see your babies when they're born. So let's just do the epidural. Let's have it in place. So I got the epidural. I got a very low dose. I could still feel everything except it was like all just pooling to my butt. So I just couldn't feel anything in my butt, but I could still feel my legs and my toes and everything. And I was so happy about that. Um, and then, so he comes back 15 minutes later. He's like, oh my gosh, these babies are coming. Let's take you back to the OR. So when you have twins, they automatically have you in the OR just in case for emergency C-section. So you have to be on like, you have to give birth on this table. It's like this narrow table you just feel so awkward um they have your legs in these stirrups like high in the air and they were pointing everything right at the door so any person who walked in just saw everything and i just had to be okay with that so it was just funny to see people's faces when they walked in like okay <laughs> um but when you have twins each of your babies has a team of about five people so there are five people for him five people for him you have two OBGYNs in the room, just in case. You have nurses for me. So I had three nurses or four nurses. Um, you have the person who's the anesthesiologist. You have um, the NICU people come in as well and they're just standing there. So, oh, and a pediatrician in there. So it's literally, I think there were like, 20 people in there besides me and my husband. So that was crazy. It was a room full of people all just watching and waiting. So they they wheel me into the OR and immediately put me on the table. And he's like, okay, they're coming fast. And I just kept saying, I feel pressure. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's getting ready and putting on his gloves and everything. I'm like, I, I really feel pressure. And then the nurse comes over and she's like, oh, there's the baby's head. So um, she's like, do you want to see? And I, she showed me in the mirror and the baby's head is coming out. So I didn't even know. This entire birth, I felt zero pain. It was just crazy after what I've been through before to go through that situation and just be so joyful. So the doctor said, I bet you if you just laugh once, this, these babies will come out. And then he told me a joke. I don't remember what he said, but he said a joke. And I laughed and guess what? Baby A came out with just one laugh. And that was another prayer of mine that I would have a joyful birth and I did. It was funny, everybody was happy, there was nothing traumatic. So as soon as they wheeled me in, he came out 
And then um, I guess the concern with baby B is that um, you don't want them in there too long because doctors have found that if they're in there for more than 15 minutes, the risk for you know, the placenta detaching and them not being able to breathe or have oxygen to them is higher. And so you have to be really careful. And also the cervix can close while they're in there. So his main concern was get, get baby B out as quickly as possible. So they had to give me medication to um, stop contractions and, uh, and stop my cervix from closing. So they kept giving me these drops under my tongue. I don't know what they were. And they kind of gave me a headache, but I was good. I just felt a little funny. And so then I looked at the clock. It was 6.50 when he came out. And the doctor had to put his arm in all the way up to his elbow. And you could, you could watch my belly just moving because he was trying to turn the baby. I guess he was transverse, which is sideways. So he wanted to turn the baby in a direction that he could easily get him out. So he turned him breech so that he could grab his feet. So he grabbed the baby's feet, pulled the baby out, and then um, my doctor has a lot of experience with this, high risk and multiples. And so he knew exactly how to turn the baby to where it puts the least amount of pressure on their head because that's, that's a concern with breech babies is that you don't want to put pressure on the wrong spots and cause them to be paralyzed. So. He put his fingers on the back of the baby's neck and slowly guided him out breech. And he was he came out fine, but he wasn't um, breathing yet, so they had to rush him over to the nurses and they had to resuscitate him with oxygen. But otherwise he was fine. He started breathing and crying, but baby A um, had the easiest birth, obviously, because he came out breathing in the right direction. <laughs> This guy had a harder time, so I actually immediately, pretty much, after they checked him out, I got to hold him. And then this guy, I didn't even really get to see his face because they had the big oxygen thing on his face. And so they wheeled me out with Jude, and I had to leave Jet, and that was really hard for me. So they're like, we're going to take him to the NICU. He has to get checked out. It was mainly because they were 36 weeks, and they just weren't sure. So um, they weren't sure about his lungs and everything. And so I didn't get to see him. They just held him up for a second and then I left. And so I went to my room, my recovery room, and I was able to immediately put him skin to skin and start nursing him, which was amazing. But I just was so sad because I didn't get to do the same with him. And so um, the whirlwind, oh my gosh, there's just such a whirlwind when you have two babies. Because if it's one baby that goes to the NICU, all your attention is on that baby. But I had two babies to care for. And so I had Jude in my room, and I was recovering from birth. And um, yeah, it was just, it was hard to figure out what to do. And so we ended up going to see him in the NICU, well, my husband did, about six hours later. And I wasn't able to do that yet because I was still getting checked over. And so I didn't get to see him for a while, I think 24 hours. So my husband went and he was able to take a video for me. And he was, he had, you know, stuff up his nose and down his throat. He had a tube down his throat and it was really sad. I, I just felt so bad for him. You know, like what a great entrance into the world. <laughs> so the next day I was able to go and see him and hold him for the first time and I just started to cry because it's really hard to be disconnected from your baby like that and I felt so much guilt because I was caring so much for this baby but wasn't really able to care for him as much and I felt guilty that it took me 24 hours to come meet my baby and it wouldn't have been that way if it was just one baby but it was because I had two to care for so yeah I just had a lot of mom guilt but um, I was able to, to spend a lot of time with this guy the kids came and we're able to meet him right away, which was great. And he ended up being in the NICU for about three days, which is the amount of time that I was at the hospital. I didn't need any stitches. I actually, my recovery, I didn't have any pain whatsoever from the recovery. I still, to this day, have not had any pain. Um, 
which is why I was fighting so hard to have a V-back and not a C-section because the C-section was terrible. The recovery is standing up hurt and for six weeks you're bleeding in the incision and just everything is just hard. So it was just so cool to be able to stand up right away, take a shower, like not have any pain when I went to the bathroom. It was just so great. My entire birth, this was the easiest birth I've ever had. So Jude was born six pounds, four ounces, 20 inches long, and Jet was born seven pounds, one ounce, and he was 21 inches. So they were big babies. For 36 weeks, they were big twins and very healthy. Um, we were a little frustrated with the NICU because once your baby is in the NICU, it's really hard to get them out because they kind of have to go through a checklist of things that they have to pass before they get out. So he had to keep getting his oxygen lessened and then they had to put him on room air and then the room air had to get lessened and then they had to take him off the IV slowly. And it was just so annoying because I'm sitting here like, this baby is fine. <laughs> I just wanted him in my room. So it was just frustrating because I had to constantly go um, to the NICU to visit him in the middle of the night because I wanted to nurse him. I knew that that was the best option. I didn't want them giving him formula all the time. And so I was getting up every two hours, setting my alarm when I'm already exhausted, taking him or taking this baby with us to the nursery to feed them both at the same time. It was just so exhausting. So I don't know if you've ever gone to the hospital and had a baby, but it's like, it's like it's their goal, but they just want you to be as tired as possible. <laughs> I don't know. That's my only beef with the hospital is you're there to recover, but they don't let you recover. They don't let you sleep. Every five seconds, somebody's coming into your room, even in the middle of the night. Everybody, every nurse, every doctor has a different schedule. So they literally just barge on in your room when you're nursing and when you're trying to rest. Hey, I just wanted to ask you about this or I need to test you for this. And, you know, even the lactation consultants were helpful talking to me. But, you know, I've had three other kids. I didn't feel like I needed that much help with nursing. And I had two nursing or two lactation consultants come every day and they would talk to me for an hour at a time. And it was just too much. There were too many visitors, too much going on. The nurses were great. It was just a lot. I, All of a sudden, my husband was like, okay, you need to make a schedule with her and tell her when you're coming because she's tired and she needs to sleep. So I was thankful he did that because, man, I just feel like the nurses need to filter some people out or something. It's too much. So yeah, I was ready to leave the hospital because it was just a lot of work being there and, you know, going to the NICU. And so we just prayed. We're like, God... We just, we need Jet to come into our room so that I'm not having to travel to the hospital. We live about an hour away from the hospital. I would have had to wake up in the morning, travel there with my newborn while I'm recovering, and leave my three other kids at home, and that just would have been a nightmare. And so, um, so we just gave our, our worries to God, and He answered our prayer. We didn't even know this was going to happen, but the night before we left at 11 p.m., the NICU knocks on our door and they say, we have a baby for you. And I was just so happy and excited just knowing that I didn't have to come back to the hospital once I was, you know, let go and didn't have to do all that work. So we were so grateful. Um, so then the next day they just checked us out and everything went smoothly. We were able to leave just fine. Jet um, passed Jet and Jude both passed the car seat test because, you know, I guess they do that now for all the babies. They they make sure that a baby can sit in a car seat for two hours straight. So they both had to pass that test. Um, and I guess they check their oxygen levels while they do it. And so both babies were fine. And then I came home and about the first week was really easy, actually. The baby slept really well. And then after that, it was just really hard. <laughs> Ever since then, the babies have not really slept. So it's been a little bit harder trying to figure that out because I'm not used to small babies. You know, I'm used to 10 and a half pounders who sleep right away. And that I think that's been the hardest part is trying to figure out premature babies. And, you know, they're a little bit more behind in 
development in terms of like um, the fat on their body and breathing and all that stuff and nursing. And so it just took a little longer to figure out. We're starting to get into a rhythm. They're starting to figure out what nighttime is, what daytime is, and so that's helped a lot. But I'm gonna do a separate video on what it's been like to have twins and other kids and all that stuff, because it's been basically crazy. Um, I don't know, going from three kids to five kids, yeah, it's a lot. So <laughs> I'd love to talk more about that, but that'll be a separate video. So if you haven't yet, go watch my go watch my actual birth video and go see go see the actual video of the babies being born. It's really fun. And I'm so glad we took the camera this time to, to watch. I've never done that before, but I really wanted those memories. So yeah, I'm going to show you the babies, and they might get upset after this, but he's asleep. Well, he was. So this is... Oh, <laughs> this is Jet. Say hi, buddy. Can you say hi? So he's taller. He feels bigger. He's just our bigger boy. And then... He's probably going to scream when I set him down. Yeah, you're okay. Yeah, you're okay. And then this is Jude. Sweet little Jude. <laughs> Can you say hi? Can you say hi? You're so sweet. <laughs> Having twins is so much fun. It's so different than what, what it takes to have one baby. But it's so much fun. So anyway... Thank you guys for watching, and keep in touch with me. Go follow me. Woo, that's really bright. Go follow me on Instagram, because that's where I post most of my pictures and videos and things. So um, go to Instagram at our family farmstead, and keep in touch with me, because I'd love to hear what you, if you guys have had twins, I'd love to hear your experiences, and I'd just love to, to interact with people on there. But So I better go, because the baby's screaming. <laughs> Thanks for watching, you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.